Hi, I'm Barb Reidenauer with STL Veg Grill Karen Dizen in the produce department at Deerberg's De Pair. Barb, everybody's talking about kale. It's full of nutrients and so easy to use. Tonight, we're going to be using it in tacos. Who'd have thought? Everybody Cooks starts now. Welcome to Deerbridge Presents Everybody Cooks. We have a full lineup of cooking tips and recipes to share with you tonight. We're going to show you the technique of burying your food in salt so that you get juicy, flavorful results. We have a delicious blackberry bottom lime meringue pie we're going to make. But first, we've invited STL Veg Girl Karen Dugan into our kitchen. Karen, welcome to Deerbridge. Barb, thanks for having me. Karen is the expert in imagining your favorite foods and turning them into delicious, healthy options using fresh seasonal ingredients. Mm -hmm. And her mission, a plant on every plate. So Karen, why is this so important? Oh, it's just common sense, Barb. If you add good, clean food to your diet, you're going to feel better and you're going to be able to fight off that cold and flu that we're experiencing now. And to boot, in the long term, we might actually even prevent the chronic illnesses that we're seeing such a rise in today. So really great benefits, but sometimes it's hard to get started on a new style of eating. So what do you suggest? You know, it's really pretty easy. We just need, we just need to make simple changes to our everyday menus. And today, we're going to start off with a chickpea slider. Oh, everybody loves sliders, so let's get started making it. All right, great. Okay, so what's first? So let's go ahead and heat up our skillet okay. and add just a little bit of olive oil. Great. And to that, I'm going to go ahead and add some cumin, about a tablespoon. There we go. And the family will come running to the kitchen very soon, wondering what the heck is going on because it's going to smell so good. Yeah, this always blooms your spice when you can heat it up a little bit before you start cooking. Absolutely, it does. Then we're going to add a little bit of baby spinach. And because spinach is so full of water, it really wilts down very quickly. So we'll add almost a full bag in there. All right. Okay. And if you want to start mixing that around, around with the tongs, I will do that. We'll watch it wilt down almost instantly. Okay, I'll turn the heat up a little bit. Now, this is a vegan recipe, right? Correct. And in a vegan diet, you don't add, of course, any meat, dairy, eggs, uh, or fish. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead to do today, in order to keep these little sliders that we're making bound well, or bind well, I should say. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to use a little bit of flaxseed water and flaxseed meal and some water. Just one tablespoon to three tablespoons of water. Give that just a real easy whisk. So that'll sit for just a few minutes. All right. And these garbanzo beans that I like to use, well, number one, garbanzo beans and chickpeas, they're the very same thing, right? It just depends on what part of the world you're in. The region you're called, in. Right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So I'm using Eden brand today, and I like to use Eden brand because they put a piece of kombu in the cooking water, and what that does is it helps our digestive system a little bit. So we'll go ahead and add the rinsed and washed beans to our food processor. I'm going to cut up a lemon. and use my lemon press. Very easy little contraption. Great little invention. Okay, just a pinch of sea salt. And our egg, quote unquote egg. We'll give that a pulse. Now, I'm not going to pulse too much because I like to have some beans intact. It's nice to see what you're eating. A little texture's always good. Right? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so how are we doing with that done. Right. Let me put that into the processor for you. Perfect. And I guess at home you might want to cool this just a little bit more before you put it in. Or? You can, but the food processor can handle it. Great. Okay. It can go. handle that heat. So a couple more pulses. I just want to get it integrated a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to grab my spatula, stir it up just a little bit more. And you know, the nice thing about putting spinach in these chickpea, in these chickpea sliders is you are getting your greens in, too. Well, it makes it look pretty. It really looks more like an herb in there, I think, than right. like spinach, the way you have it processed. And that's another good point about eating this way. 
I like to tell people to eat the rainbow. You're getting a whole That's lot of good. nutrients. Good idea, yeah. And, okay. of course, the food has to taste good or you're not going to stick with the oh. eating plan, right? You know what? That's the truth. So. I tell people, don't eat something that you don't enjoy. <laughs> What's the point right. of eating it then, right. right? It has to be flavorful. Okay, so that's our mixture, and we're going to also be using this garbanzo bean flour. And I like to use this because obviously it is, yes, of course it's vegan, but it's also gluten-free. So these burgers, vegan and gluten-free. So a double bonus. Absolutely. Okay, we're going to add the flour on top. And because I like to get down and dirty with my food, I use my hands a lot. Okay. So you can do it yourself, call your husband. Call the kids down, <laughs> get them in on the action. Yeah, it's a fun recipe to do. If you want to make this a little bit firmer, go ahead and put it in the refrigerator a half hour up to about overnight. And then the next morning, you can create your patties and you have dinner for the next night or for the following night. So that's a, a great idea. Yeah. All right. Now, this recipe is going to make 12 sliders. We're going to put together a few of them here and they cook for about four minutes per side. So look we'll at those cooking. The patties are done, they're nicely brown, they look like sliders to me. So let's just put those on to some whole wheat buns along with some lettuce and tomato. Instead of just using regular old ketchup today, I thought maybe we'd spice things up a little bit. We're going to use this chipotle chili pepper, mix it all in there, okay, and add just a little spoonful on each one. You know, it's all about making things flavorful and colorful, right? Right. And to go with this, we have a Napa slaw with a ginger vinaigrette. You can find that recipe at Deerbergs.com. Just makes a really complete meal that's white and fresh and beautiful and delicious. That's the whole secret, right? That's right. Okay, let's make one more recipe. All We're right, make tacos now, right? Yes, lentil quinoa tacos. Ah, okay. No, I know. Yeah. Stick with well, me. It's I love okay. tacos, so let's see what you're going to do here. Okay, so first we're going to grab the kale that we picked out earlier, All right. and we're going to fit that. This big kale into these little into these little shells. Yeah. And how are we going to do that? You're a magician, right? Well, almost. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take these two kale leaves and fit them on top of each other. Then roll them. Now this is this looks pretty fluffy and dense, which right. it's, it's a great kale, and this is the season for it. But we're going to just roll it to the best of our ability and start making small cuts because what we want to end up with is little ribbons of kale that will fit nicely into the taco shells. So we'll put that into the taco shell first, and then we'll go ahead and put in the lentils. Now these are steamed and ready to eat, so really all we did was just heat them up a little bit, and then I added a spice mixture that you can find in the Everybody Cooks magazine this month. Okay, I'm gonna take just a little taste to see sure, please. how you got them seasoned here. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna add some sauteed onions. What do you mm. think? Oh, these are good. Good? Yeah, very flavorful and real hearty. A little spicy too, right? Mm -hmm. Great. So here are, I just added a little bit of onions, and now I'm going to add some quinoa. Now quinoa is an ancient seed, but it cooks up like a, just a regular grain. Okay. It's um, full of protein, so a half a cup is going to give you about 16 to 18 percent protein. Now you'll find a traditional, a pearl, a red, a black. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in flavor and nutrition? What, what, how would you pick the difference there? You know what, the nutrition is the same okay. for all of the colors. And um, this pearl quinoa that is really the most common is going to be probably, at least in my estimation, the most fluffy. Now another thing, when you're cooking any grain or even quinoa, I like to use uh, vegetable broth. It really adds a robust kick to the flavor. So we're just going to Add a little bit more quinoa to top that off. And mm, if I wanted to, we could go ahead and uh, add this dairy-free cheese. It's called Daya, and it comes in a lot of different flavors here. Um, the cheese is vegan and gluten-free, so and it's just made from plant, plant oils. So a lot of benefits to eating it. And how does it work in recipes? Does it melt or? Oh, it melts beautifully. You can top it on your pizza. You can roll it up in a burrito, put it on a salad. It's very versatile. So great cheese to know about. Mm -hmm. And if you want to spice it up a little bit more, we have this colorful pico de gallo. That would be nice to add to it. Sure. Actually, the fun thing to do is you can have a taco bar where you put out all the ingredients and your family or friends, can, everyone can make their taco with all the things they want. That's right. Everybody's happy then. Yeah. And besides tacos, what else could you do? Um, burrito maybe? or Absolutely. You can, as we talked about, you can make a big old salad, you know, big taco salad, roll it up in a burrito. Um, it's, there's, opportunities are endless. 
great ideas and great recipes. Thanks so much, Karen. Now, if you want more ideas from Karen, you can find her on her website, which is stlveggirl.com. And Karen also teaches classes at our DePere Culinary Events Center, so you can sign up for a class and meet her in person. <laughs> so it's been great having you here. Thanks so much. Oh, Barb, thanks for having me. And remember, a plant on every plate really is pretty simple and great ideas for getting started. I know you're going to enjoy these recipes. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Chef Marianne Moore joins me in the kitchen. We have lots more tips and recipes to share with you, so don't go away.